Tesla stock is currently up almost 5% at one point. Tesla stock was up about 10% here in After Hours. This situation is far from over. I have all of the numbers and news information that you need to know in regards to Tesla. And then we will cover the earnings call after it comes out at 8 p.m. here on the channel. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into all of your new developments you need to know with Tesla. Tesla missed across the board. Earnings per share coming in at 45 cents versus 51 cents, as was expected by LSEG. Revenue coming in at 21.30 billion versus 22.15 billion, as expected. That was a miss across the board, while margins actually came in better than expected. Some of the reasons why Tesla could be going higher here in after hours trading is you have the adjusted EBITDA margin that came in higher this quarter compared to last quarter. Last quarter, the adjusted EBITDA margin was 15.7%. Now it is 15.9%. You also do have the total gap gross margin coming in at 17.4% and estimates were it was going to fall into the 16 or 15% range following well, some of the latest price cuts, it might, we'll have to wait and see, and that's why the earnings call will be important, but margins being a little bit better than people expected. Here in the quarterly update deck summary, profitability was 1.2 billion gap operating income in Q1, 1.1 billion gap net income in Q1, 1.5 billion non-gap net income in Q1, operating cash flow came in at $200 million in Q1, free cash flow was negative $2.5 billion in Q1. This is AI infrastructure capex that was $1.0 billion in Q1. They spent a lot on your AI training compute. That's kind of crazy. Tesla's cash and investments decreased 2.2 billion in Q1 to 26.9 billion, still at a very strong level, but you're starting to see the first quarter of decline there. Operations, they increased their AI training compute by more than 130% in Q1. They had record energy storage deployment of 4.1 gigawatt hours in Q1, and they produced over 1,000 Cybertrucks in a single week in April. Tesla says in the summary, we experienced numerous challenges in Q1 from the Red Sea conflict and the arson attack at Gigafactory Berlin to the gradual ramp of the updated Model 3 in Fremont. Excluding Cybertruck and unscheduled downside, our COGS per unit declined se sequentially, driven primarily by lower raw material costs. So that's good. COGS is cost of good goods sold. Global EV sales continue to be under pressure as many car makers prioritize hybrids over EV. While positive for our regulatory credits business, we prefer the industry to continue pushing EV adoption, which is in line with our mission. To support our growth, we have been increasing awareness and expanding vehicle financing programs, including attractive leasing terms for our customers. While many are pulling back on their investments, we are investing in future growth, including our AI infrastructure, production capacity, our supercharger and service networks, our new products infrastructure, with $2.8 billion of capital expenditure in Q1. That's a lot of investing. They go on to say, we recently undertook a cost-cutting exercise to increase operational efficiency. We also maintain or remain committed to company-wide cost reduction, including reducing COGS per vehicle. Ultimately, we are focused on profitable growth, including by leveraging existing in existing factories and production lines to induce more new and more affordable products. The future is not only electric, but also autonomous. We believe scaled autonomy is only possible with data from millions of vehicles and an immense AI training cluster. We have and continue to expand both. To make FSD supervised more accessible, we, we reduce the price of subscriptions to $99 a month and purchase price to $8,000 in the US. Look, Tesla says our company is currently between two 
two major growth waves. The first one began with the global expansion of the Model 3 and Model Y platform, and we believe the next one will, will be initiated by advances in autonomy and the introduction of new products, including those built on our next generation vehicle platform. In 2024, our vehicle volume growth rate may be notably lower than the growth rate achieved in 2023 as our teams work on the launch of the next generation vehicle and other products. In 2024, the growth rates of energy storage deployments and revenue in our energy generation and storage business should outpace the automotive business. As far as cash, Tesla says we have sufficient liquidity to fund our product roadmap, long-term capacity expansion plans, and other expenses. Furthermore, we will manage the business such that we maintain a strong balance sheet during this uncertain period. Profit. We are while we continue to execute on innovations to reduce the cost of manufacturing and operations over time, we expect our hardware-related profits to be accompanied by an acceleration of AI software and fleet based profits this is new information this is new here and uh this could be also having a positive impact to tesla stock as far as the product we have updated our future vehicle lineup to accelerate the launch of new models ahead of our previously com communicated start of production in the second half of 2025 uh, these new vehicles, including more affordable models, will utilize aspects of the next generation platform as well as aspects of our current platforms and will be able to be produced on the same manufacturing lines as our current vehicle lineup. This update may result in achieving less cost reduction than previously expected, but enables us to pr prudently grow our vehicle volumes in a more ca capex efficient manner during uncertain times this would help us fully utilize our current expected maximum capacity of close to 3 million vehicles enabling more than 50 percent growth over 2023 production before investing in new manufacturing lines our purpose-built robo taxi product will continue to pursue a revolutionary unboxed manufacturing strategy wow Give it up to Tesla. Give it up to Tesla. Give it up to Tesla. Give it up. That is huge. Okay, let me just summarize what I just read here. Okay, number one, the next generation platform vehicle, 2025, still coming. There was no rejection of that here. That's fantastic. And that's why, uh, that's probably the main reason, despite, you know, margins and, and the other, you know, slightly positives relative to this that are also helping Tesla stock. Um, that's a big one. Everyone thought the Model 2 was not coming in 2025. It looks like Tesla has confirmed the second half of 2025 is still when you're expecting the Model 2. We don't know about robo-taxis. We'll see what the deal is with that one. But everyone was heading into this earnings with a lot of fear around the Model 2. And that does seem to be um, unwarranted at this point moment in time now they do go on to say that the current production lines will be able to handle the next generation vehicle platform they'll just tweak them a little bit and that's also great because again that that that's maybe less capex at least initially and could get the you know model 2 out faster to customers so those are your main uh points to kind of point out so far it looks like there was a little bit too much fear heading into Tesla earnings. Tesla stock is currently at $153 per share. You are up 5.5%. You're really bobbing between 5% positive and 10% positive. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But we do have other Tesla stock breaking news today that I think you need to know as well before the earnings call starts. So let's go ahead and get into that. Now, believe it or not, there is a lot of other Tesla stock news today, despite it being an earnings day. So we'll go ahead and get into that right now. Tesla has officially launched the new Model 3 Performance, the most powerful Model 3 ever, with a starting price of $52,990, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, with a range of 296 miles and a top speed of 163 miles per hour. And here are some images of the Model 3 performance that is being launched today. The seats are custom seats for the Model 3 performance and just absolutely beautiful. Same with the uh, wheels. There's a lot of other specs as well, like suspension. There's actually going to be software updates to the suspension to make it a lot more comfortable and a lot of smaller nuances. But I wanted to share the main key points. 
CarMax's Spring 2024 Electric Vehicle Consumer Report has revealed that Tesla's two most popular vehicles, the Model Y Crossover and Model 3 Sedan, are among the most popular EVs in the United States' second-hand vehicle market. Kia has cut the price of the EV9 by $7,500 with a new discount offer. And look at that, Katy Perry has just taken delivery of her Cybertruck with a green wrap on it, and she does have over 400 million followers across her platform. Celebrities taking delivery of their Cybertruck and posting about it is exactly what you want to see. Take a look at the Tesla lineup. It's exploding, specifically the Cybertruck. It's at 65. I mean, just right after the Cybertruck launched back in January, the Cybertruck was at 18. It's been a slow and steady ramp up ever since. You can also see the Model Y has recently exploded from 31 to 44, the Model 3 going from 23 to 30, the Tesla Model S going from 11 to 14, and the Model X going from 9 to to 12. In fact, take a look at this. This is a uh, a meme that I screenshotted from my phone today um, of the Cybertruck. This thing had over a hundred thousand different reactions on the post. It says the Tesla Cybertruck is just a Pontiac Aztec with PlayStation 1 graphics. Even though people are making fun of it, that's still positive. As they say in the Wolf of Wall Street, all publicity is good publicity. And let's be honest, with this rise in Google Trends data, I will be very surprised if Q2 deliveries come in weak. On another note, Tesla's lowered the monthly lease rate for the Model 3 long range in the US by 6.4%. To $439 a month from $469 per month with a down payment of $2,999 from previously $4,500. Tesla's FSD supervised V12.3.5 is now rolling out to select Tesla owners in North America. Now we are only about an hour away from getting the Tesla earnings call and these are some of the questions that are likely going to be asked. Number one most upvoted question from retail investors is, what is the status of 4680? What is the current output? It says, and Tesla usually answers um, like five, six, seven of these questions. Uh, the next up is, what is the current status of Optimus? Are they currently performing any factory tasks? And when do you expect to start mass production? Number three, what is Tesla's current assessment of the pathway towards regulatory approval for unsupervised FSD in the U.S.? And how should we think about the appropriate safety threshold compared to human drivers? Elon's already answered that before. He's he's basically said if if there is a disengagement rate that is less than of which a you know human loses consciousness, then that's probably the right metric to be looking at. So that's probably what he's going to say there. Um, the next one up is following Tesla's RoboTaxi unveil on August 8th. What is the realistic timeline for launching a revenue generating RoboTaxi network? I hope they answer this one. I hope they answer this one. Um, I think they will. And this could be a uh, real money catalyst for Tesla stock if they do answer that in the right way. And then the last one says Tesla following Tesla's or nope, wrong one. What is the progress on the cheaper next generation vehicle? And both of these are really the two money questions. If there's, you know, positive things to say on both of these that's what is going to dictate whether or not Tesla stock does go higher and continues higher into the earnings call and over the next really months. I strongly believe this will be the most important earnings and earnings call for Tesla in 2024. It's either going to cause a re-rating or it's going to cause markets to say, hey, we were way too bearish on Tesla. The situation's not nearly as bad as we thought and thus buy up the stock. The new Tesla Model 3 performance qualifies for the full $7,500 federal EV tax credit in the US. This means the car cost just $45,490, including the credit, making it by far the best value performance car on the market and deliveries start in May.
Getting some clarity from Elon and the Tesla team on the suspected take rate of FSD will also be great. You can see on Google Trends, you shot up to 100 clearly as a lot of people were searching about full self-driving as they got their free trial. It fell down to 38 and now it's back up to 54. Again, prior to this free trial, you were trading anywhere, trading, uh, trending anywhere from 10 to 20. I want to see if we trend anywhere from 30 to 40. If, if we're higher than that, I'll be surprised. If we are higher than that, then that would, you know, say that the take rate must be a lot higher. But the full self-driving trial is not over with. And I don't know if we're going to get definitive numbers from the Tesla team, but I'm sure they're going to have positive things to say. Nonetheless, Tesla's global inventory numbers for the Model Y have recently fallen quite a bit up ticking a little bit over the past couple of days now at about 6,700 units in inventory globally. The Model 3 has kind of been stair-stepping up as well, which is actually great. You're sitting at 2,500 for inventory, similar numbers for the Model X, and the Model S is just doing literally nothing at about 1,300 or so units in inventory globally. Tesla files a notice for a planned 2,688 layoff in Texas, according to reports. U.S. labor laws require employees with at least 100 employees to file a warn notice, which serves a 60-day notice for planned layoffs that will affect at least 50 workers. Last week, Tesla filed a similar notice for its plan to lay off 285 employees in Buffalo, New York, starting on July 15th. And Tesla is eyeing 400 job cuts in Germany through a voluntary program. The company said it, it is looking to implement the cuts through a voluntary program instead of forced layoffs, the report said. Tesla was quoted as saying it is facing challenges related to weakening sales market for electric vehicles, Tesla did not immediately request or respond to a request for comment from MT Newswires. Heading into Tesla's earnings call, the option activity today is actually on the lighter side, which is surprising. You do have 638 orders totaling $201.84 million with a positive order value of 31%. Shorting activity, on the other hand, is definitely strong today if we go ahead and pull that up. Apparently, I'm not able to see that. I'm getting a lot of spinning circles here on Ortex, but you are sitting at multi-year highs for the short interest heading into this earnings call. ARK Invest Tasha Keeney says investors should zoom out and look past Tesla's short-term struggles. ARK Invest has a $2,000 price target on Tesla, implying a $1,300 percent stock price increase by 2027 that would be a 13x on your money general motors this morning beat quarterly results targets and raised their forecast the michigan automaker upped its adjusted pre-tax profit projection for the year to 12.5 billion to 14.5 billion from its previous range of 12 to 14 billion so raised the low end and raise the high end. Wall Street typically likes that. They say, quote, our consumer or cut. Yeah, consumer has been remarkably resilient in this period of higher interest rates, says GM's chief financial officer, Paul Jacobson. I would say this also gave Tesla a positive effect heading into their earnings today. We do have other earnings today in After Hours from Visa, Enphase, Texas Instruments, Steel Dynamics, Chubb, Seagate, Baker Hughes, Weatherford, and Mattel. Tomorrow, pre-market, you have Boeing, AT&T, Vertif, Humana, General Dynamics, Boston Scientific, and Biogen. Wednesday and After Hours, you have Meta, IBM, Ford, Chipotle, ServiceNow, Viking Therapeutics, Lamb Research, Vail, and Align. And then on Thursday, that's your big day in pre-market. You have Royal Caribbean, American Airlines, Newmont, Altria, Caterpillar, Southwest, Bristol, Myers, Mobileye, and AstraZeneca. After Hours, that's your big moment for this earnings season. You have Microsoft and... 
Alphabet reporting earnings, as well as Intel and Snapchat and Roku. Sentiment heading into Tesla's earnings call today is neutral at 54. Message volume today is high at 65, and the participation ratio is also high at 55. If this earnings call is another disaster like the prior earnings calls, Tesla's stock unfortunately is going to be re-rated, the multiple is likely going to fall, and Tesla's stock is going to trend back down to about $100 per share. If this earnings call is good and different from the last four earnings calls that we have had, Tesla stock could easily trade back into the 200s. So today is a very important day. I did run a poll here on YouTube that said, will Tesla stock rally or fall after earnings? 15% of you guys expect a three to 5% rally. 22% of you guys expect a 10% plus rally. Uh, yeah, but uh, People are not feeling great here. 28% expect a fall between 3 and 5%. And 35% expect a fall greater than 10%. Wow. Just being a contrarian would say, maybe Tesla stock does rally big. This earnings. But we'll have to wait and see for the earnings call. That is going to go ahead and do it for this video as I am patiently awaiting the earnings call. I am going to be going over it with you guys in the next video coming out at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. So stay tuned to the channel for that one. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about Tesla's earnings so far. The new information that we know down below in the comment section. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.